In Power Automate Desktop, we have different kinds of loops. Let me show you the most important ones. First of all, we have a for each. A for each iterates through, say, a list or data table. That's the most common ones. So let's create a list that we can iterate through with the for each. I'll find the set variable and let's give our list a name. I'll just call this any mouse and then let's create the list. To create a list, you will have two percentage signs in the start and in the end. Hard brackets done in the end, and then we will have the list items inside these hard brackets. In single quotation mark, put in your first element that will be dog. And then I will say cat, and let's have a bird like this. So three elements in our list that we can iterate through, and I can click save. Here comes our for each. So I'll drag in a for each. What value do I want to iterate? I want to iterate to the animals up here. So I'll say animals. I'll store them into a Q and item variable. That means that now we have three. So and we are looping through them one by one. So that means whenever we are in the first occurrence, we can refer to that item as Q and item. Here it will be dog. Then the next iteration takes place. The Q and item will now be cat, bird and so forth if we have more elements. So let's storm into an animal variable instead. And here you can see, so the list is called animals and then each item when we loop through them with a for each, that is called animal. This is just a reference name. You can call it whatever you want, but best practice is to use a name with some meaning to the data. In that way, it will get later. It will get easier later on if you want to update your flow or if your colleague wants to. But then I can click save. Now let's just print out the names. So very, very simple, but I'll find a display message as we often use when we want to display messages. So here I can just refer to this animal here. So I click this little X, the animal, make sure you pick the animal and not the animals. But then I can click save. I click run, dog, cat, bird. That's how easy it is to use a for each. Now we want to use a loop. So, and let me click um, this for each up here, hold shift in, click the end, right click, disable action. It's just because I find it annoying when we move to the next example to show these pop-ups. So, but you can find have them if you want. So let's have a loop and the loop is doing something X times. Let me show you. So let's drag in a loop. And here you can see, I actually accidentally dragged it in uh, before the end, I'll just have it here. So I want to start from one, I want to end at five with increments of one. So this loops run five times, one, two, three, four, five, very easy. It produces a variable called loop index. And that is an index of what loop we add. So first, it will be one, two, three, four, five, very straightforward. Then I can click Save. Again, let's try to display a message here. And here I'll just write out the loop index. So click this little X here, take the loop index. And we could say, this is run number, like this, a space, and then we'll have the loop index. So now when I run the loop, it says this is run number one, two, three, four, five. That is a straightforward loop. Often we are using its cousin called loop condition. So let me again mark all these things and disable this. So now I want to um, do the loop condition and a loop condition evaluates on something. And whenever this is true, the loop will continue. We'll often use it when we want to check for elements at the web page. Say that we want to pause the flow um, and then look for an element. If the, that element is not present, then we want to pause it further and maybe pause it for like uh, 10 or 20 loop iterations of maybe 10 delayed seconds. So we can use it to check for something and then make it last a while. Let me show you. So here I'll have a loop condition and I'll drag it in. Actually, I dragged it in before the end. It will go in after, but let me show you. We can uh, move it afterward. So the first operand, 
now we need to to have an operand and since we don't really have it here we can say uh, we can say if two equals two save and let me just move this end up here so this is essentially an infinite loop this is always true so if i run the robot here you'll see that i have now created an infinite loop it will run forever because this condition is always true so and this is not really best practice as you can see this run this robot will run forever but imagine that it takes some uh, hard system actions right now it's just running it will not take uh, any system resources but you can actually create a very bad robot that will run forever so always uh, do your conditions uh, so they can change or make a handbrake i'll show you both of the things first it's just uh, instead of here we will have something to evaluate on so I'll find a display um, input dialog. Here I'll take, I'll ask the user for some input and then I'll save it as a variable. I will drag it in in the loop uh, condition here. So here I want to say uh, the title that could be capital. And here I'll make a little quiz. What's the capital of Denmark? And then uh, the user will give me an input. So that will be stored here in user input. Let us call that capital for easier reference. Then I can click save. Now I only want this loop to run uh, until the user has, the, the, uh, that the capital value is Copenhagen because that's the correct answer. So if I go up here in loop condition and then say the first operand, let us just say capital. If that is equal to Copenhagen like this, then uh, it will run. So right now uh, we just need to change the operator to say not equal to. So now it will run as long as this capital variable is not Copenhagen. Let me show you. So, and let me just drag it in over here. So what's the capital of Denmark? I'll say London. It will run once more. Let me just do one more fail. So Rome, come in here and let's just pick Copenhagen. It's now finished. So it finished because um, this one was not true anymore. So the capital is not Copenhagen. It's not equal to Copenhagen. Then this will run. But now it became Copenhagen. So this became true and it stopped. So a loop will evaluate on something when it goes in, run the actions inside it, evaluate again and continue. But what is what if if our user was very uh, didn't know the capital of Denmark? Then we created an infinite loop that could essentially run uh, unlimited times. I know that the user will probably get bored after five attempts and then just leave the computer or shut the flow down. But imagine that this was some unattended robot that checks for something. Then we wanted to to have some sort of a break in the loop condition, and this is very important. And for this, I need some sort of a counter that says only run this loop x times. So I'll find a set variable here and then I'll drag it in here. So here, this one, I will call this loop index and it will start at one. I only want to run it 10 times. So I also need to each time a loop has run, I also need to add one to this. So pick a set variable uh, in the end of the loop. And this is actually something that you'll use a lot. So please pay close attention. So the value, click this X here. I'll add one to the loop index whenever we reach the end of the loop. So that will be plus one here. I don't want to make it 10 because then I need to make 10 guesses. So let's just make it five to make it easier for ourselves. But you can, of course, change it up here in the loop condition. So right now we can only do um, we can only do one condition, but we can actually make uh, more conditions inside here. We just need to make it a little bit different. So what we can do up here is that we can say if uh, the capital is not equal to and then it's Copenhagen like this. And now you just need to have it in um, single uh, quotation marks because uh, the capital is a variable. Copenhagen is not. That's just text. So that's why. And then we also need, so we know we need to have an and, and then we can say if this loop index, we only want uh, if the loop index is is um, is less than or equal to uh, five, then we want it to run. When the loop index is six, that means that the loop had ran five times. We don't want to run it anymore. So that's it's just um, below six, and we can write it like this. So if the loop index 
is less than six. Then, so we only want this to run whenever the capital is not equal to coming and loop index is six. So this is an expression. And now we will change it to equal to true. So we will only run, run this loop condition as long as this expression up here is true. That is, if the capital is not correct guessed and the loop index is below six. Let us see. So now we can run it. And um, I'll just show you here and I need to drag it in here. So now the loop index is one. You can see it over here. Let us just press A. Now the loop index is two. I'll just press B. Uh, not correct answers. So C. And that's why I didn't want to make it a D. And now it will be the last one because the loop index is five. This is still true, but next time it will be six. This will not be true. So we will stop our loop. I don't know where I went that. So that will be E. There you go. We have now made a backdoor. This is a very important concept. So if you didn't know what, if you didn't understand what's, what went um, on here with the set two set variables and the condition, please rewind the video and do it. Thank you. And your next lesson is up here. That will take you to another important power automate desktop concept.